Hello everyone, my name is Lauren St. John and I'm going to be talking about the recent increase in carjackings. So according to a 2021 Chicago Tribune article, carjackings are making an alarming resurgence across the nation and over the last two years, major cities such as Chicago, Philadelphia, and New Orleans have seen the number of carjackings increase dramatically. One of the most troubling parts of this trend is the ages of the carjackers. 14-year-olds, 12-year-olds, and even 11-year-olds are being arrested and charged as adults with armed carjackings and even murder. Based on data from 2021, studied by the University of Chicago's Crime Lab, the Attorney General of the District of Columbia reported that from 2020 to 2021, they saw a 60% drop in the number of juvenile cases, but carjacking cases nearly tripled and more than half of those arrested for carjackings were under 18. Carjacking is considered a violent crime since a gun or weapon is used. Therefore, many first-time offenders are charged as adults or youthful offenders instead of a juvenile and are not offered court-appointed mentors or rehabilitation-focused forms of punishment. Studies show that putting juveniles behind bars with lifetime criminals does not eliminate crime. It creates more lifetime criminals. The juvenile courts, state officials, and social services agencies need to collectively develop programs specifically designed to steer child carjackers away from future crimes through intervention rather than incarceration. Through my research, I have discovered that the rise in carjackings in the last few years is thought to be a result of COVID and that many of teen carjackers are first-time offenders with no juvenile records. I could even argue that victims as child engaged in positive activities. However, when the pandemic hit, these went away. Kids no longer have a positive outlet or access to mentors. Instead, they were stuck at home with family members dealing with death and job loss. As the pandemic wore on, they began jumping into cars left idling and then escalating to carjacking out of boredom or free entertainment. While COVID seems to be a common denominator in the uptick of teen carjackings, something surely must be done to deter these types of crimes. But locking up kids in the rest of their lives is not the option. There are reasons America has a juvenile justice system for youth under the age of 18. Though it is far from perfect, the juvenile system is intended to allow delinquent young people a chance at rehabilitation. It's supposed to steer them back on track and give them a second chance at becoming productive citizens. The system doesn't always work, but the alternative is worse. Research shows that youth who are sent to adult prisons are more likely to die by suicide while in jail. They experience more psychiatric problems than young people in juvenile facilities, and they are more likely to commit additional crimes once they are released. Programs such as after-school drop-in centers, behavioral health support, summer jobs, and mentoring to at-risk youth or first offenders could help rehabilitate these teens. What's the alternative to incarcerate incarceration of these teens, preventing the crimes from occurring in the first place is key. Of an unprecedented lockdown, family strains lack of positive social activities and no stress outlets. Why are teens committing carjackings at such an alarming risk? Experts say COVID is due to blame for the uptick in carjackings. During the pandemic and lockdowns, teens experience a detachment from lifelines of school, social activities, and close family contact, which has left them vulnerable to dangerous influences. Many of arrested teens don't have juvenile records and are first-time offenders that are likely making bad decisions out of boredom or peer pressure. When the lockdown began, young people were immediately disconnected from positive outlets, communities, and opportunities they'd previously had. Eduardo Fuer, a personal a professor at Georgetown Juvenile Justice Clinic, believes the pandemic may have had two effects on vulnerable teens. One is shutting down programs that are essential to healthy young development, and two is intensifying kids' pre-existing trauma leading to riskier behavior. Chicago Police Department Chief of Detective Brendan Denham thinks the overriding factor in Chicago carjacking surge is a lack of positive outlets during the pandemic shutdown. He believes that the increase in carjackings is a direct result of impressionable kids having no access to all the things that may keep them engaged, such as school, 
school programs, or sports. The University of Chicago conducted a study specifically looking at young people arrested on carjacking charges in 2020. It found that the majority of them had no prior record prior to the pandemic and were more likely to live in an area with lower internet access and school attendance. Neighborhoods have developed after-school options such as recreation centers to keep the juvenile courts, state officials, and social services agencies need to collectively develop programs specifically designed to steer child carjackers away from future crimes and deter at-risk youth interventions. Programs such as after-school drop-in centers, behavioral health support, summer job mentoring, job training, chemical treatment across geared specifically to at-risk youth or first offenders could help rehabilitate these teens by redirecting behavior in positive, um, it can provide positive influences. Carjackings committed by teens has risen drastically across the country in some of America's largest cities. These appear to be a direct correlation with the increased carjackings and the effect of COVID pandemic on teens. COVID closed schools and it halted social services that provided at-risk youth with positive outlets and denied them access to mentors and other programs. The closure of schools and the arrival of remote learning led to lots of idle time. Household stress and economic insecurity, pre-pressure, peer pressure, and bad influences have also contributed to teens having more free time and less stability in their lives. City officials and law enforcement need to be mindful that these are kids committing these crimes and not to be so quick to punish. They need to take all the underlying factors that led to the bad behavior in account and develop intervention programs that deter violent behavior and rehabilitate rather than solely focusing on the punishment.